Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you the problem list and the past medical history section functionality. The problem list is an important part of the EMR, allowing you to keep track of all the active problems for a patient during their visit. It also helps facilitate your documentation by being able to extract this data directly into your documentation. When a problem list is well maintained, it will make the documentation of such things as a progress note or a discharge summary much easier by not having to scavenge through the chart picking out all the active issues the patient had during their stay. Similarly, a well-maintained past medical history section will benefit all the providers when they are working within a patient's chart. Since the problem list and the past medical history sections are shared sections within the EMR, any changes to either of these sections is immediately available to all providers when they are in the chart. A provider has the ability to add to the problem list or to the past medical history while they are documenting on a patient, or it can also be done just while they're simply looking through the patient's chart. Let's have a look at this functionality. I'm currently in the patient's chart on the summary screen. Over here on the right hand side in the reference panel, you will see the section for the active problems of which this patient currently has none on file. And you'll see down below the past medical family and social history, where I have diabetes and hypertension currently listed as the past medical problems. I'm going to go ahead and put an active problem in for this patient. This patient is presenting with chest pain. I'm going to go ahead and put that as an active problem. By clicking on the active problem button, I can now add this to the problem list. I can type in chest pain and I am provided with a list of ICD-10 codes for chest pain. I simply want just chest pain, and I'm going to add this to the active problem list. Not to the past medical history, but just to the active list by selecting active. Now, the active problem for this patient is chest pain. I can also see over here on the right hand side that the patient's past medical history of that of the diabetes and hypertension are also included. At this time, these are not part of the active problems during this patient's stay. You can see now by updating the active problem list that over here, chest pain is now listed as one of the active problems. If during the patient's stay, more problems arise, I can simply add them by going back into the active problem list. I can do this once again by selecting it over here in the reference panel, or I can go into the history and problems tab up here in the chart, as well as I can do it right through a documentation template, which I will show you in future videos. Let's go ahead back into the active problem list. I'm going to add another active problem. The patient has now developed a urinary tract infection. So I'm going to type in UTI. Urinary tract infection is listed here, and I'm going to add that as an active problem. Once again, it is not part of the past medical history. It's just an active problem for this visit. By hitting that, I now have urinary tract infection added as an active problem for this visit. You can see now that over here in the active problem list, that urinary tract infection and chest pain are both listed. If we want to add to the past medical history, we can do so in the same fashion. We see here that this patient has a history of diabetes and hypertension as part of their past medical history. We want to go ahead and also add that they have a history of hyperlipidemia. 
I'm going to select the active problem list again, and I'm going to add here hyperlipidemia. However, I'm not going to select it as being an active problem because it's not an active problem for this visit, but it is an important part of the past medical history. So I'm going to select history. This now adds hyperlipidemia to the past medical history. When I hit save, I will now see that the hyperlipidemia has been added to the patient's past medical history list. As I mentioned, this information can be accessed or added over here in the reference panel, but it's also available under the history and problems tabs in the chart. If I click here, you will see that it brings up the problem list and the past medical history. Here is the active problems on this patient. And when I select down here, I can see the active medical problems as well. I can hit the edit button here to add more problems or to resolve problems or remove them from the list. Similarly to the active problem list, I can hit edit here to add more problems or to resolve the problems if they have been resolved. Let's go ahead and resolve the urinary tract infection that is no longer a active problem and has been treated. We're going to go ahead here and click on edit. The, ur the urinary tract infection is listed here as an active problem. This problem is no longer an issue as the patient has been treated effectively and no longer has any issues with the urinary tract symptoms. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to change the status of this problem to being inactive, okay? That has now been removed from the patient's active problem list. When we go to save, we will see that it now updates the information in the right-hand panel as well, where the urinary tract infection is no longer listed as one of the active problems for this patient. During this patient's stay, they unfortunately developed a non-STEMI heart attack. What we're going to do is add this to the active problem list because we're treating them now for this non-STEMI. I'm going to select this as being an active problem. However, this is also a significant problem that needs to be part of the patient's past medical history. So I'm going to add it as both. I'm going to select the both button and now the non-STEMI is an active problem for today's visit but it's also an active past medical history. By selecting it as both I have now populated both the active problem list and the past medical history list. When I hit save, you will now see that the active problem list includes the non-STEMI. The past medical history now includes the non-STEMI as being an important part of their past medical history. It's very important that the problem list and the past medical history list be very well maintained. For example, now that we know that this patient has had a non-STEMI, that was the reason why they had their chest pain. The chest pain is no longer an active problem because it has been determined that that chest pain was from the non-STEMI. We can go ahead and remove the chest pain from the active problem list. Let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna go here, select chest pain. It is no longer a active acute problem and we're going to inactivate this problem. As you can see now the problem is no longer on the active problem list. Let's hit save and you can see now that the chest pain has been removed from the active problem list. The active problem list and the past medical history are two very important components of the EMR. A well-maintained active problem list 
in a well-maintained past medical history will make documentation such as progress notes and discharge summaries more efficient and help with providing better patient care. Being a shared list, the active problem list and the past medical history list is shared across the entire EMR. Any healthcare provider who has access to the active problem list or the past medical history, when they make changes to the list, this will be available immediately to all providers who are in the chart. Thank you for watching.